Uh, hey guys, welcome back. And today we're doing a video on Zayvon Collins. Zayvon Collins was a first round pick by the Arizona Cardinals in the most recent NFL draft. He's a really good linebacker, really good player, definitely a top four linebacker in the class, along with Parsons, Joker, and Jamin Davis. And the Cardinals took him because they had to upgrade the linebacker room from last season. <laughs> it wasn't very good last year. Uh, Devondre Campbell is bad in coverage, not super reliable. He was let go because he's just not really that great of a player. Uh, Jordan Hicks is a good player. He is a good linebacker, but he's never going to be an elite linebacker. And he's only going to he's only going to get older as time goes on as well. And Isaiah Simmons was drafted by the Cardinals eighth overall last year. That's true. And his ceiling as a player and as an athlete are very, very high. There's not many guys on earth who are 6'4", uh, 240, and can run a 4'3", 9". That's a very, rare, very rare, very special skill set. But his rookie year was up and down, and he's going to get better as time goes on. He has to kind of get acclimated to playing in the NFL and kind of not being the jack of all trades and really playing one position. And he'll definitely get there, but they need more at linebacker than just him going forward, you know, for the next five, 10 years. And he's also not going to be a middle linebacker, right? Uh, Simmons is going to be the weak side, strong side linebacker. Zavin's going to be the middle linebacker, Mike linebacker, as they're called. And he'll be really good in that role. Because at Tulsa, that's kind of what he did, right? He played center field. He would make plays in the run game, run all over the field. He would stack and shed. He would make good tackles. He was also good in coverage, especially in zone coverage. He was really, really good. He always got good depth, always knew where to be, good awareness, good field vision. And just your kind of standard all-around do-it uh, inside linebacker, middle linebacker, Zavin was that and more. And he makes some really cool plays uh, in this game. And I... I chose this game because this is one of his best games in college, right? I was considering doing like a highlight video like I do for many other players and just picking a few plays from different games. But Zavin in this game, it's so many big plays that I felt like I could just break down this one game and show you guys throughout the game how he played, how he progressed, how at key moments and crucial moments he made big plays when his team needed him. Uh, but yeah, with that, we can get into the film breakdown. So on this first play here, he's actually going to be able to get all the way across the field and find the running back. He just can't get his hands fully wrapped on the running back, so he misses the tackle. But this doesn't show up in his tape very often, so it's not really a big deal to me, if I'm being honest. Right? He goes all the way across the field. He avoids the block from the lineman. He just happens to – he gets his hands on the running back. He's right there to basically make the tackle. He just kind of briefly misses and unfortunately can't make the tackle. And the rest of his teammates are also not in position to really do anything either, so the running back gets a first down and more. But Collins didn't really make a bad play there. Like, he basically – was right there to make that tackle. And and it also doesn't happen very often in his tape. Like you rarely see him miss. So once or twice a game, if you do, it's not a big deal. You know, you can't be perfect. It is what it is, but it's, it's fine. You know, throughout the game, it's not an issue. Most of the plays he makes are really, really good tackles and other stuff. You know, you're going to see right here, very next play. He's going to trail the running back all the way downfield. Quarterback's trying to look over there to make that throw. And he can't and ultimately get sacked. And you'll see from the better angle right over here, Right, Zavin starts at midfield. He starts basically almost at the hash. He's able to see the running back coming out there. In less than a second, he recognizes what's going on. He goes over to him, follows him down the field. The quarterback's even looking there to make that throw. His eyes are looking right at the running back. But because Zavin's there taking that throw away, quarterback can make that throw, and the quarterback uh, ends up getting sacked. So good stuff by Zavin there. And very next play here, as you're going to see, like, like I said, he rarely misses on tackles. And you see that over here. Avoids the block from 80. The tight end can't even get, get his hands on Zavin in time to make the block. Uh, Zavin comes in there and makes that tackle. And I think to notice over here is that if Zavin doesn't make this tackle, right, if Zavin doesn't do this and wrap up and uh, take the running back down, this DB fell down. This DB is getting blocked. There's one guy deep over here. If that running back takes one good angle and makes number three miss, he's gone to the house for like 90-yard touchdown run. So Zavin does a good job coming in there, taking that lane away, making that tackle. Really, really solid stuff, man. Uh, on this next play here, it's a third and 10, and he's going to do two things on this play, right? First thing he's going to do is he's going to drop into a throwing lane. He's going to uh, drop back into a zone, take away the th throw to number four. So he took away that throw, and then he's the quarterback on a run. He comes in there and helps make that tackle and prevents him from getting the first down. Throughout the game is what you're going to see. He's going to drop into zones. He's going to make good tackles. He's going to make good reads. He's going to make plays in the run game, like all over the field. He's flying around doing good stuff when he drops into zones he's also really good at kind of knowing where to be like he doesn't have to turn around even to know where to be he just kind of is where he's supposed to be right underneath four so he can't make that throw to four quarterback's trying to run he comes in there doesn't, doesn't let him get doesn't let him get any yards beyond line of scrimmage keeps it to a fourth and ten fourth and nine and makes that tackle very next play here yet again comes all the way kind of not all the way across the field but goes over a couple of gaps you know his teammates take some bad angles defensive line gets pushed back a little bit but Zavin comes across, avoids any blocks, and is part of the gang tackle on the running back. 
once again, solid, solid stuff. Uh, next play over here. This is a really impressive play. He's actually going to go literally actually all the way across the field in this one, right? And the guard gets a free release at second level and tries to block Zaven, but Zaven doesn't get blocked. Zaven sheds those arms away, outruns the guard, and somehow he's the first one there to make a tackle, even though he was literally the farthest guy from <laughs> the quarterback, right? Like the five of his teammates fuck up here at right? 30, takes a bad angle, gets blocked. 58 goes all the way upfield and doesn't really do anything. Uh, this defender, for whatever reason, over pursues to the uh, right side of the field too much. 84 is blocking this guy. These two DBs are too far away. Like, Zavin should not be the first one there. Zavin should not even have to make this tackle. <laughs> yeah, he's the first one to go make contact. And it is a first down, but, you know, what can Zavin do? Like, it wasn't even really his job to go make that play, right? And he also does a good job shedding the block for number 70. 70 couldn't get his hands on him. And you'll also, you'll also, see, you'll also see that throughout the game, right? Uh, def offensive linemen are rarely able to get their hands on him. He sheds their hands really well. He rarely ever gets blocked. If that, you know, in that sense, this is one time where he does get blocked, but, and it does look like he kind of messes up here. Once again, he does a good job coming all the way across, knowing where to be, seeing the running back. Like he's once again in position to be the first one to make a tackle. No other defender for Tulsa is within like five yards of the running back. Unfortunately, what happens here is that the lineman kind of, the lineman basically holds him. You'll see from this angle right over here, right? Zavin comes all the way across, avoids kind of getting blocked for the most part until right over here where the lineman grabs his back shoulder plate. I'm not sure this actually counts for holding in terms of like a penalty, but he is being held basically and he couldn't really disengage. But it's not really like on him, I wouldn't say. Like it's the only second play of the game where he's like really made a bad play. And once again, not, not a bad play, not really his fault, right? He shouldn't even be the first one there, <laughs> yet he is. His teammates, once again, don't really do anything. The running back gets like a 10-yard gain. And it's a, it's a recurring theme throughout the game where like, he's really making all the plays like 30 has a 30 has a free shot to the running back right here right? 30 has a free shot whiffs totally this defensive lineman gets taken out of the play 21 gets blocked and it just doesn't able to do anything. Like all these other guys don't really do anything Zavin's the only one going out there, basically cleaning up everyone's mistakes and kind of covering for them. And uh, yet again here, very next play. Uh, when linebacker coaches talk about stack and shed, when you hear like analysts talk about stack and shed, this is what they mean, right? The lineman tries to get his hands on Zavin. Zavin does not allow that. Zavin actually gets his hands inside the lineman's chest plate. He's holding the lineman up until the running back's closer to him. When the running back's right there, he disengages and goes and makes that tackle. Number 72 literally never got his hands on him, right? Watch 72 over here. He never, he, he literally has his hands at his lap right now, tries to get his hands up. By the time he does get his hands up and in, in position to block, <laughs> Zavin's already let go. And he goes and makes that tackle. The lineman couldn't do a damn thing. You see him clap his hands right there, knowing he lost that rep. Zavin's really good, man. Zavin's really good at stopping the run, dropping into zones, making plays in, open, in the open field, too. You're going to see over here in coverage, too, kind of comes in, makes a really good tackle. And then this is some high-level like awareness, like high-level field awareness, right? He's trailing 15 at first, and he sees four is going to get the ball. The moment the quarterback throws the ball, Zavin's going to be the first one there to go and I mentioned earlier that even though he's kind of listed at 6'4", 270, he moves like he's smaller. But when he hits you, he is still 6'4", 270. You're going to feel the impact of his collision. And this uh, running back, I think, actually gets injured on this play, unfortunately. It wasn't a dirty play or anything. He just even hit him pretty hard, made a good tackle. The running back's leg got kind of tangled up, and I think he gets hurt. But Zavin makes a fantastic play here, man. Sees what's going on, reacts in an instant, makes a great open field tackle, clean form tackle, doesn't hesitate, doesn't miss, makes you know smart plays, smart decisions. That's what he does, man. He was Tulsa's defensive MVP. He was Tulsa's basically team MVP. And you'll see later on in this game, he makes the game-winning play. But we'll get to that in a little bit. But yeah, fantastic, fantastic player, man. Next play here. Literally don't even cut or edit or anything for the most part, right? He, he does three things on this play, right? I'll, I'll, let this, I'll let this play happen again. He does three things on this play. And the better angle will show it a little better yeah, right over here. So first thing he does, he drops into his throwing lane, takes away a throw, right? He literally goes right underneath 23. Quarterback wants to throw over there. Quarterback can't because Zavin's right there. He'll pick that off. So quarterback goes to his check down. Zavin sees the quarterback going to the check down <laughs> and goes over there and literally is there. The moment the running back catches the ball, Zavin's right there. And he limits us to a no yard gain, right? He literally drops into his zone, sees the running back out of the backfield and goes and makes that tackle all by himself. No one else on the field really did anything on that play. That was all Zavin. It's the way he does, man. These are the kind of plays that he makes constantly. This is not some highlight tape. This is literally just the snaps he had from one game against Tulane, one of his better games, like I mentioned uh, earlier. Uh, one other thing to point out over here is that this isn't an actual play breakdown, but this is ESPN's like live broadcast film analysis of Zavin during the game. And everything everything they're doing here is not that complicated. Like they're literally breaking down the plays exactly as how I did it. These two plays I showed you guys already in this video, right? The first play where he doesn't get blocked, goes all the way across the field, makes that tackle, does a good job there. Other play here where he's in coverage and has the vision to see number four coming over, 
trails 15 to start with, sees the ball's going to four, comes over to four, makes that tackle. Like the point I want to make with this little kind of brief, like break from the breakdown is that it's not that hard to do like a basic film analysis, like of players and stuff. Like you can watch football and learn a lot and you can just kind of do what I'm doing here. It's not the most complex advanced thing. I, I just kind of want to point that out because these guys get paid a lot. And these guys are like, you know, ESPN analysts, like experts, you know, gurus, whatever, like, but half of what they do is like nothing special, nothing unique. It's just basic, like watching a game and seeing what a, if the player is good or bad or not. Right. So I've been watching football for like four or five years. I feel like I'm decently good at it. The video breakdown I'm doing right now of Zavin, like that's basically exactly what those guys are doing. And I'm watching, you know, on YouTube at home <laughs> from a video that I found online. But yeah, I just, just kind of wanted to point that out. So uh, next play here, it's a play action fake a little bit. He does not bite him the fake. He's the first one to get into the backfield, kind of mess with the QB. The QB does almost juke him like slightly, but Zavin's able to get him by the ankles. If there is one flaw Zavin has, it's not a big thing, but like... He, once again, most of the time he moves like he's 6'2", 230, but once again, he is 6'4", 270. Occasionally that will kind of show up. And this is one of those times, right? He he overpursues a little bit too much to the left and the quarterback is able to cut inside. And Zavin's luckily long enough to get his hands down and hit the quarterback in his ankles. So the quarterback does go down. But if that was Lamar Jackson, if that is Kyler Murray, if that is Russell Wilson or whoever else, I mean, Kyler's on his own team, but you guys get the point. Like if that's like an athletic quarterback who can move around the open field and make guys miss... Zavin might get juked a couple times, you know, that it is what it is. I'm not a big deal, smiler, small, minor thing, but a couple times you will see a size show up, but like 95% of the time he's totally fine. So that's why I don't really uh, care that much about it. Uh, next play here. This is one of the time I was talking about, like he's right there to make the play. Like he literally comes all the way across the field into the gap. Like he's right there in position to make this tackle. He just over pursues a little bit too much, right? He takes one step uh, too far to the right and he over commits just a little bit. And for whatever reason, his teammates, I don't know what the hell they're doing over here, man. Number three runs into him. Number seven runs into number three. And they all miss the tackle and no one's in the gap. Like, number three should be over there. Number, like, number three should be here, right? If Zavin's over here, number three be over here. So take away both the gaps in the lane, right? But they leave it so wide open. The defensive line gets pushed entirely out of the <laughs> entirely out of the way. And Zavin overproduce a little bit too much. His teammates both are in the wrong spot. And this running back gets a pretty big gain. Once again, this technically you can say it's Zavin's fault, but like he's been good most of the game and like he took a, he took a half step too far to the right. Like it, it's not a big deal. And his teammates really messed up over there. Like they should have been right there to make that tackle. He took away half the lane. The other half of the lane is open. Number three, number seven, go over there. <laughs> you know, it, it is what it is, right? His teammates weren't really that great. For them to have even been ranked last year, it's really, really impressive. And Zavin was a big part of that. Once again, he really, he rarely ever gets truly blocked by a lineman, right? Like, for a second, he kind of does, but then the moment the running back's coming right at him, he basically sheds his hands away and is part of that tackle, part of the gang tackle. And this running back's getting like free releases at second level, dude. This defensive line's not doing a good job. They're not staying in their in their gap properly. Number 30, also a terrible job of doing anything at all. You know, his teammates in Arizona with Buda Baker and Chandler Jones and Isaiah Simmons will be a lot, lot better. So that should help him quite a bit and, you know, ultimately make the whole defense better, which is why they took him, right? He was kind of the missing piece, I would say, or one of the big missing pieces. So... Cool stuff there. This is another play where, once again, like, he's... He, the rest of the defense is just... I don't know what they're doing, man. Like, I really don't know what they're doing here. Like, the replay angle will show it a little better, but this running back avoids, like, seven, eight dudes, like, in one play when like, he should have been tackled for, like, a tackle for loss, right? Like, he should have been taken down in the backfield over here somewhere, but 30, uh, 30 over pursues the wrong way, 90, whatever, also does not go in the right place. Seven, seven is a free shot, right? I had him to, like, limit him to, a two, like, a one-yard gain. But seven misses his tackle. The running back shakes him off. 23 is right. Zavin is right there. And he does get a decent hit on him. But however, the running back or receiver bounces off of him. And then it takes like two more guys to bring him down. Like, like th this dude literally made like one, two, three, uh, four, five. Like it took six, seven guys to bring him down on like a 10-yard play where he went like, you know, sideways and then cut back in. It shouldn't be happening like that. But it just, it just kind of did a lot last year. So next play over here, and this is the play I think I was referring to earlier, where he literally lines up at outside corner on the, on the far, like, you know, sideline of the field on the boundary on a running back and trails him all the way downfield 20 yards into the end zone. Like he's 6'4", 270, lined up at outside corner on a running back who's like 5'11", 220, running 20 yards downfield with him. It's, it's comical. It's comical that he can even, that, that Tulsa's even willing to put him out there and even attempt for that to be, you know, a thing they can do, but they do. And he doesn't get his head turned around once again. He's not a corner. Like, I don't care. So if he's, if his technique isn't perfect, I'll live. And he, he does get his head turned around, but he's so big and like, so like, so obtrusive that he literally just standing there makes his throw and catch difficult for the running back and the quarterback. 
and ultimately it is deflected. I don't think this is not PI because the running back trips on himself. The running back just falls down, falls backwards, and Zavin's kind of right there. But even if he doesn't fall, Zavin's literally so big and takes up so much space. Like, I don't think the ball is going to get caught. So, <laughs> really, really, really it's, it's so funny. It's like, truly, like, he's lined up out there like a goddamn corner dude, like on a running back. Like, Cardinals defense had such big issues last year against running backs out of the backfield. For Zavin to be out there lining up on the boundary, covering him in the end zone one on one for the most part, safety comes in at the last second. But Zavin kind of did most of that. Cool stuff, dude, and really, really useful for the Cardinals defense. Going to be a major, major upgrade for them, man. And this is the last build video we're going to go through. I basically showed every snap that Zavin took in the game. I I, I, cut, I left out a few plays because they didn't really have much happening, but this is like 15, 16 plays that we went through, and this is the, probably the coolest play of the game, one of the coolest plays he had in college. A game-winning pick six, man. A game-winning pick six in, in double overtime to have Tulsa be six and one, or sorry, five and one for the first time in a long time. <laughs> Takes it all the way for 96 yards to his own end zone for the touchdown, man. Phenomenal, phenomenal stuff. Like I was mentioning earlier, like he, he takes away throwing lanes, right? His size is really dangerous to throw it because he's so long and so explosive. Like just throwing in his direction can be picked off. That's why quarterbacks are afraid to kind of test him in that. You're going to see right over here, right? This receiver's open. This receiver's open. He has a step on a two steps on the, on the corner or linebacker covering him. If the quarterback makes a good throw or this throw is caught or whatever, this is a game winning touchdown for the most part. But Zavin's right there. Zavin's so long. He's right there. Gets in that throwing lane. Gets in that throwing lane. Gets his hands on it. That's 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, I don't know his wingspan, but it's probably pretty big. Gets in there and takes away that throw and literally takes it from the quarterback in the air and runs it back for a 96-yard pick six to win the game, man. Phenomenal, phenomenal stuff. And once again, the receiver was open, right? You'll see right over here, the receiver was open. Like, this, is, this could have been a game-winning touchdown catch for the offense and for the worst receiver. Like, he has two steps on him. There's no other defender like behind uh, Zavin or in front of this receiver. If this is caught, this wins the game, right? It's totally open. But Zavin gets in there, gets his hands on it. D dangerous, deadly whenever he drops into those zones. And he picks it off and runs it back, has the speed to run it back and win the game, man. Fantastic. Fantastic. I can't say, I can't say it any more times, any more ways. It, it, just, it just is. Cardinals got a damn good one in Zavin with... Uh, Z Cardinals got a damn good one in Zavin Collins with that first round pick definitely you know i would say well spent he's, he's gonna be he's gonna be on the defense for a long 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 time be the defensive leader defensive play caller like their franchise middle linebacker truly fantastic stuff dude and once again his teammates love him he's like one of the leaders of the team probably the leader of the team everyone's so hyped as they should be great stuff dude uh but yeah hope you guys enjoyed uh let me know what you guys think in the comments down below feel free to like uh comment subscribe share the video with any uh, Cardinals fans, Tulsa fans, Zavin fans, whoever it may be, always really appreciate it. Always helps the channel grow. Uh, we're at like 198 subs, super close to 200. So super, super excited about that. And on Twitter, we're like 550 followers. So growing on there. So feel free to follow at Sports Medicated on Twitter, same as the YouTube name. Uh, you know, whatever you guys are liking, retweeting, commenting, sharing. I want to see, I want to interact with you guys. I want to know you guys better. And as the channel grows, I'm really excited for everything, you know, we're going to do going forward. I got some more videos coming out real soon. I'm trying to get more I'm trying to get more consistent with the video production and getting stuff out for you guys. So I'll, I'm, I'm working on that. So really excited for all that. But yeah, Zavin's really, really good. Zavin's going to be a great player for this defense. He's going to be a great player for this team. Uh, he's He might be the best linebacker on the team day one, right? Isaiah Simmons, like I mentioned before, has a super high athletic ceiling. But in, in terms of being ready to play NFL linebacker, like out the gate, uh, Zavin's right there. He'll fit right in perfectly. He'll be that play caller, probably wear the green dot. And Buda Baker's going to love him. Chandler Jones, if he's still around, will love him. J.J. Watt will love him. The whole team will. So, so will the city of, I think, Glendale or wherever the Cardinals are from. Not fully sure. Uh, but yeah, that's kind, of all I have for, that's kind of all I had for today for you guys. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for stopping by. You all have a good day.